it is getting easier and easier to get research to space. For example, there's a, a drug called Prolia that has come to market, came to market in about 2011. And that drug, the mechanism of function of that drug was tested during space station assembly. Well, now if I'm talking to a group of women about osteoporosis, I can talk about how space flight, you know, is linked to osteoporosis and this drug is out there. And there are women who will say, hey, I'm taking that medication. So it's just much easier now to relate because we've had enough time to have those results come out and really start affecting people's lives. Everything's different today because you're really able to use the space station as a real laboratory. Now that we're doing 300 experiments, 350 experiments at a time, we are looking three years from now at this huge bow wave of research that uh, results that will be coming out and that research is really going to be having an impact in our country. One of the things that's really exciting to me right now is the number of new researchers that we're talking to. But now with the access opened up, and with the funding sources opened up, so it doesn't just have to be NASA, it can be the private sector, it can be other government agencies, then the best ideas all have a way to get to space. Over 96 nations in the world have done some aspect of either education or research on the space station so far today. And that access is broader and broader as we have users coming in from countries all around the world, people trying experiments, and of course science is international. So what it means is through the network of international scientific collaboration, almost any scientist in the world who can find funding for their research is going to be able to find a way to access the laboratory. Subscribe for more space. space, 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 space.